Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. It has been a while since I've been on here. If you follow me on Instagram you know why and where I've been but yeah I've been away for a bit but I'm happy to be back with some new videos for you. In this video I wanted to do like a bible buying gift guide and I've come up with five things to consider when you are looking to buy a bible for yourself or even as a gift. Bibles make wonderful gifts and there are some really special ones out there that would be perfect for someone special in your life. So there are so many types of Bibles out there to choose from as you know and it's not as simple as just finding a random one and getting it and that's it you've got the Bible. I learned that the hard way. So initially when I first started my Bible journey I just wanted a Bible. Bear in mind this is the second time round okay if you if you want to know my story let me know, I can do a video on it. But basically the second time around in 2021 when I started this whole channel and everything, I just wanted any Bible. I just felt the urge to get into the KJV and study. And so I just went and found a pretty white one on Amazon, this one. And that was it. I was like, there's a Bible, it's KJV, let's go. <laughs> I didn't know there were different types. I just wanted a Bible and it was great. But once I started reading it and I wanted to study I soon realized that actually this style and this format probably wasn't the best for me because I was studying and I wanted space to write and these Bibles with small margins are not the best for that. It's fine if you've just got a couple of notes but I know I could write more if I had the room but you know when you know better you do better. So now I know better I wanted to share some tips if you are in a similar position or if you're looking for a new Bible for yourself or as a gift for someone else, then I pray this guide is useful for you. So the first tip when you're looking for a new Bible is function. What will it be used for? And you think, well, I'm just going to read the Bible, duh. <laughs> but no, there are lots of different ways to use Bibles. There's reading, there's just for writing notes, there's for doing art, there's for writing prayers, there's for decorating with stickers and tabs, there's ones for traveling, just for highlighting, underlining, studying, memorizing scripture. There's so many ways to use Bibles and this is going to affect how you're going to answer the rest of the questions. And if you want to know more about the different types of Bibles, you can go and see my seven types of Bibles videos that I have for more examples of what's available. And I'll leave that linked above. But just some examples here, you've got like, for example, this is a Bible that I only use for art. You might have seen this before. So for an art Bible, I needed one that had a lot of margin space so that I could actually create some art. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do it in my other Bible that I just showed you. So there's lots of things to bear in mind of what the function is going to be when you're using it. You've also got like study Bibles where they have information for you and footnotes of all of the scripture and biblical backgrounds and things to help you as you actually study. And then this is another type of study one. It's for keywords. So you've got the definitions of keywords in Greek and Hebrew as you study the Bibles. So yeah, there's lots of different functions for Bibles. You need to be clear on what those functions will be before you purchase. Another little thing that you might want to consider that I don't often see people talk about are antique Bibles. Now you can find these in car boot sales and antique shops online. I love antiques and they would make beautiful gifts because there is so much history to them. I have a few now, both of these come in a, in a set. So I've got the Holy Bible with common prayer and I've got common prayer with hymns in the style and I have another really big one as well. But yeah, they are all different time periods and they're so beautiful and they would make gorgeous gifts for people who just love the word. There's just so much history to them. I wish they made them this small, by the way. This is the complete Bible. Isn't it just darling? And if it wasn't so old, it even smells old, guys. Oh, I can't even describe the smell. It's just, and it's perfect in condition, so I can't use it, obviously, but I wish they made them this size. Isn't that just perfect for carrying around? And these beautiful prayer Bibles, the common prayer, look how dinky and adorable. Again, perfect condition, beautiful soft leather and gilding. And I've got prayers for all different seasons. 
it's just beautiful, really nice. And these are just things I bought myself and I treasure them and I just have them on display and I just admire them. And every now and then I'll hold them and just go, wow, how much history is in here? So yeah, do check out antiques as well, especially if you get them for gifts. They are really, really special. The next thing to consider when you're looking for a Bible is which translation is the right one for you. Now this may need its own video, but the idea is to take some time to look at those websites that have scripture in lots of different translations and see which you feel would be best to understand or to learn from, depending on its function. Some translations are obviously easier to read, while others might be better for deep study. My first Bible was an NLT. I think I've shown this in my previous Bible collection video. I talk a little bit about my, um, my journey, but this is NLT because I was obviously a baby would be Christian, didn't know the word, never read it before. And I just did a quick Google on what is the easiest translation to understand. So I just picked up NLT and I read that through. And then when I was reignited, I went for a KJV. I'd just seen a lot of talk online of people reading from KJV and the language is very different, but obviously there are different words used and you get a different understanding. So I do like to study from the KJV, but this takes a little bit of slower reading because obviously it is like a new language. You do have to kind of understand different words that were used at that time. And then there's the NKJV, which is like a newer version of that. So it's a little bit easier to read, but still has the integrity of the KJV. Um, yeah, I have loads of different types. There's another NLT here. Um, and an ESV. So yeah, there's loads of different types. I personally like having a little bit of everything because <laughs> then you can look over different translations. But if you're just looking for one Bible to begin with, make sure that it's a translation that fits your needs, whatever they are. Again, it goes back to function. What are you using it for? Is it just for quick skim reading? or is it for deep study? Because a different translation might be suitable. Like if I'm just having a reading Bible or if I'm scribing, like I have a scribe from this Bible, I just want something that I'm gonna be able to understand because I'm not doing deep study in the words. So I just use an NKJV, but if I'm doing deep study, I want to study from a KJV because the language is different and a bit closer to the original. Obviously the newer translations are in more modern English. So that's just my personal preference, but. As long as you're clear on what it is that you want, then choose a translation that's right for you. The next thing is font size. Now, this will likely affect the size of the Bible, which I'll come to in a minute, but you need to take your eyesight into consideration because you don't want to be straining when reading the Holy Word. So uh, this one is quite large font size, a 10. And it's quite still compact size Bible, but the font size on this is very legible. And I find this very easy to read. So this is a nice one just for just skimming along because the text is quite large. If I compare it to this NKJV, which is obviously a lot smaller. You can see here the difference in the size. And then just for laughs, this is another one of my antiques I forgot to show you. <laughs> this, is, this is the absolute smallest font. <laughs> Check out that font. Now that is teeny. <laughs> I can actually just about read it. Like it's not blurry or anything, it's just very, very small. It's just the New Testament in here, by the way. Yeah, I was just showing you that one for fun, but font size does play a big role in a Bible that's right for you. Again, depending on what you are planning on using it for. So as I said earlier, the next thing you want to consider is Bible size. Now, if you're gonna be using the Bible for deep study and you know it's got a permanent place on your desk then, you know, a big, heavy, chunky one might be good. This is one of my biggest and heaviest and chunkiest ones. Uh, this one just stays on the shelf because I cannot carry this around from room to room. It's a beast. Similarly, it's my humble lamb one. I feel like it's quite a big beast as well. As much as I adore this Bible, it's so beautiful. Look at it. This is very much a, a show on desk kind of Bible. Again, it's not one that I find comfortable to carry around and things because it's so large. And that's fine because they all have different functions. That's the key to remember. Depends what's right for you. If it's sitting on your desk and you just want to grab and go and read on, on your desk and study, then that's perfect. But if you're looking for one to carry around or put in your bag or take with you to church or something like that, you might 
want to opt for a slightly smaller one. So these ones are quite compact. I still think this is kind of chunky. For me personally, compact is more like this size. I really enjoy this kind of size. It's got the whole Bible in it. It's very small and that fits nicely in a bag. That's slightly larger. Again, if I'm carrying around, I would prefer a smaller one. Or even better, if you follow me for a while, you know that I have a travel Bible. This is one that I keep in my bag with me all the time. This one goes on holiday with me everywhere I go. It's traveled with me all over the place because it is perfect. It's literally the size of a phone and it has the whole Bible in it and it's ideal for carrying and traveling around. So this is my on the go Bible. Of course they come dinkier. If you can find them this size, like, oh, let me know because I really would love a Bible this size. I think this is just perfect for carrying around and then like super super carrying around on the go <laughs> uh, but yeah and the next thing to consider when buying a bible is your budget so how much do you want to spend think is it going to be something you plan on keeping for life as like an heirloom or a special treat or gift then you might want to go for a premium bible for example these are my two main premiums. I don't have many because they are very expensive. These are made from goatskin genuine leather. And so they are more expensive and the pages, you can tell the quality, the difference in the quality of paper and the gills and everything. It's just another level. If I compare, look how nice these are compared to a budget Bible. I mean, it's not really fair because this has been used in more than these two, but you get the idea. This is also budget Bible in comparison. So yeah, it's just, <laughs> they are another level and they do make exquisite gifts or just special treats for yourself. This one, by the way, um, I painted. If you want to see my video on how I did that, I'll show you above. So it didn't come in white, unfortunately. Most, that's another point I want to make. Most premium Bibles and not in the most feminine colours, they're very kind of dark leathers usually. There's very few out there that are feminine. So yeah, if you kind of like feminine Bibles, Humble Lamb is, is my go-to. Humble Lamb are the best at offering more feminine colours. They've got pink and a rose gold. And then yeah, you just might have to do a little DIY and paint one yourself if you want to. This was a... Um, dark brown originally and I painted it white with rose gold so that's an option for you as well so those are premiums and the antiques you'll be surprised that they're not too expensive unless you go like really really old ones if you're going back 1600 era you'll find that they're ridiculously expensive because they're very unique but there was there are so many from like the 1800s and 1900s out there that are very reasonably priced if you want to check out some antiques and these will be exceptional quality I'm telling you they don't make them like this anymore <laughs> so that's a good recommendation for you but if you're on a limited budget and you're someone who wants to grow a big collection you might want to go for budget Bibles and there are so many and they are the ones that have the most range for you available so I only started my collection about two years ago, so the majority of mine are budget because I wanted lots of different types and I wanted them in different translations. So yeah, budget was the way forward for me. And you can find some really beautiful designs in the budget because they come in all sorts of colours and patterns and designs. So these are all budget Bibles. So yeah, clearly I have a style, don't I? <laughs> If I had my own Bible library bookshop, they would all be these kinds of colors, pinks and whites. So yeah, those are my main tips for my Bible buying gift guide. Let's quickly summarize. So the first thing you wanna think of is function. What is it that you're going to use your Bible for? There are loads of different ways that you can use Bibles. It's not just reading and not just studying. So really think about what's gonna be the function for this Bible and that will help you choose. Like, do you need more margin space to write notes? Well, then you might want a wide margin Bible. If you're going to be definitely putting tabs in your Bible, then you, you might wanna think, do I need to worry about what kind of guilt I've got on the edge of mine because there are that can increase the price sometimes like this is art guilt so it's got pink underneath if you're going to be covering it with tabs so you won't see that feature you might want to think do I need to invest in something with 
a nice gilded edge if it's going to be covered up. I personally don't use any tabs, you'll notice, in mine because I just am in awe of the beautiful gilding of the edge of Bibles, so I just cannot bring myself to cover them up. But many people love tabs. Then you want to look at translation. Take some time to research which translation you would like your Bible in. Again, link it to its function. What are you using it for? If it's for everyday prayer, maybe you don't want to pray in KJV. <laughs> maybe you want to pray in more everyday common language like the NLT or the ESV or NKJV. Take some time to think about which translation is right for you. Consider the font size. There are some that do nice large fonts. And if you're not worried about that too much, and you want a more compact Bible that's going to have a smaller font, of course, then you need to weigh that up too. Again, think about the size of your Bible. If it's something that's going to be on display on your desk, a nice big chunky monkey, it might be really nice on there. But if it's for the go, then you might want to get a smaller one. And then, of course, budget. How much are you willing to spend on a Bible if it's for yourself or for a gift? Do you want to go to the premium route or do you want to go for the budget route? Just bear that in mind. So that's it. I pray that this guide has given you some food for thought in helping you narrow down your choice of Bible, whether it's for you or a special gift for someone else. I pray this has helped. If you want links to any of the Bibles that I have in my collection, I do have them all for you. You can see the link below, mywhitebible.net forward slash links. And if there's anything that I haven't got linked in there, please do let me know and I can pop it in for you. So thank you for joining me in this video. I pray this helped. Let me know, are you going to be getting any Bibles this season? Are you going to be buying them as gifts or for yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And do you have any other tips for buying Bibles? Please do share. Remember Jesus loves you. Lord willing, I'll speak to you soon. And until then, have a blessed day. Bye.